Do you ever experience some digestion challenges? There are so many different factors that play a role in our digestion. Things like hormonal shifts, stress, genetics, food intolerances, thyroid health, chronic diseases, medication or supplement use, and of course, the foods that we eat. And if you feel that your digestion is off more often than not, it may cause you to steer clear of some foods or even question what is truly best for your unique body, making it really challenging for you to practice eating well on a daily basis. So I'm gonna share with you a few tips and tricks that can help you optimize your digestion so that you can feel your best and not have to worry about being uncomfortable after eating or before eating. Now, before we jump in, let me know how often you feel your digestion feels a little off. Once in a while, weekly, or daily? Hey there, I'm Mikkel Kuinga, registered dietitian, founder of Nutrition Stripped, and creator of The Method Membership. I'm here to show you and guide you about how to eat more plant-based whole foods on a daily basis, making it more easy, enjoyable, and also mindful. I'm gonna share a few of my go-to tips for optimizing your digestion. But before I do, I wanna share exactly how digestion works so that you have a better understanding of the entire process and why the tips I'm going to share can support your digestion. Digestion is a super complex process, so I'm gonna spare you all of the nitty gritty scientific details and break it down in a simple way. The process of digestion is the act of consuming, breaking down, and also processing and utilizing the food for energy. Pretty simple, right? And there are two major ways food is digested. One is mechanical, mechanical digestion, when food is chewed and physically broken up into tiny little pieces. And the second way is by chemical digestion, and this is where food is broken down into even smaller molecules with the help of digestive enzymes and also stomach acid. Now overall, there are five steps to the digestion process. So first, food is mechanically broken down by our teeth in the mouth and chemically by the enzyme amylase, particularly for carbohydrates in our mouth. Then peristalsis, a motion that pushes food through our esophagus to the stomach and also continues to physically churn the food through the stomach muscles is where pepsin and then also hydrochloric acid meets the food. And those two elements chemically break down our food. Now after food has been chemically and mechanically broken down, which again can vary in time just depending on how much food you ate, so the portion, the variety of foods, uh, it could be around one to two hours depending. And then it goes into the small intestine. So for example, healthy fats or fiber rich foods and even protein take much longer to digest typically than carbohydrates do. That's why also eating them together can help us feel fuller longer, which is a great win. So the small intestine again breaks down food, but it also absorbs some key vital nutrients with little finger-like projections called villi and microvilli. So after that, the liver produces bile and the pancreas produces pancreatic juice, which is sent into the small intestine to further chemically break down food. You get it here, there's a lot of breaking down. Lastly, after the food has been broken down and passed through the small intestine, the large intestine basically takes all of that remaining water and also remaining nutrients and absorbs it. So this is how stool is also formed, and then the stool passes out of our bodies via the rectum. So there are several steps in the digestion process, and our body and your body does a lot of work to make that happen. So that was a really simplified version. Now, in order to ensure that we're taking care of our body's digestion process, there are a couple of tips that you can use daily. Now, you can use these tips absolutely to help alleviate any digestive woes that you might be having or experiencing, but digestion is more than a few tips. It really comes down to knowing exactly what to eat on a daily basis, being routined with that, being consistent with that over a period of time so that you're truly supporting your body 365 days a year. I have hours of training inside my method membership that walks my members all through the entire digestion process. So keep that in mind as you're using these tips because it's only a small part of the entire picture. So let me share a few tips that can help you. 
So number one, which I truly cannot stress enough, is to chew your liquids and swallow your solids. I've said it before and I will say it again, but the best and most elementary way of improving your digestion and also just helping it function the best ability that it can is to chew your food well and chew it enough that you can almost swallow it like a liquid. Now, chewing your liquids also activates that digestive enzyme in the mouth to prepare your stomach for absorbing all of those amazing nutrients and also it just helps the digestion pro process kickstart. It seems really simple, but so many of us are quickly eating, we're hardly taking the time to actually chew our food thoroughly. So if you're normally a distracted eater, meaning you're at your desk, you're typing, you're eating, or you're in front of the TV, or you're doing any other activity other than solely focusing in on your meal, you're likely, you know, you're likely not focused on chewing. You're just eating it bite by bite. After watching this video, search my YouTube channel or head to nutritionstrip.com for mindful eating. And you can learn a few practices that can help you slow down, be more mindful and present at mealtimes. My second tip for you is to eat more fiber. Fiber, especially from vegetables, takes us longer to chew and also helps us stimulate our digestive juices and get the whole process going with our enzymes and they can also help you feel fuller longer. So fiber amongst many things is also a cornerstone for our health, especially when it comes to, of course, our digestion since it adds to the bulk of our bowel movements. Now, fiber is incredibly important to any diet because it helps us balance our cholesterol levels in the blood. It helps regulate our bowel movements, as I just shared, regulates our blood sugar levels, regulates our satiety levels, which is that fullness feeling, lowers risk of certain types of cancer, reduces risk of diabetes, and overall adds to that bulk to help you stay regular. It provides our gut with a hefty dose of prebiotics, which are the food for the good bacteria in our gut. So a few fiber-rich food sources include dried figs, flaxseed, chia seed, beans, lentils, whole grains, and all of our non-starchy carbohydrates. So tip number three is if you're feeling constipated, try adding more magnesium to your diet and also water. You can add magnesium in your diet really easily by beefing up the beans and lentils and greens. Now, I know so many of you might have trouble digesting some of those particular things, especially beans and lentils. So if that's the case, one quick tip that you can do is to learn how to soak them overnight and then discard and rinse the water after you soak them. We buy all of our beans and legumes dried, so soaking is always a part of our cooking process. And we just simply soak them overnight in filtered water. Then in the morning, I, I discard the water, rinse them off, and then we cook them. So in addition, remember that beans are loaded with fiber. So it's really important that you gradually increase your fiber intake over time so that your digestive system can kind of adjust and get used to it. Now, magnesium helps the muscles in the body naturally relax. It does a million other things, but that's the thing that we're talking about with your digestive tract. And another thing that you wanna make sure you have in your regular diet is both the magnesium and then prebiotics and probiotics. Now, they work synergistically together to stimulate the growth of beneficial bacteria in your gut, which is, of course, key for digestion among all of these other tips and things that we're talking about. And prebiotics include foods like onions, garlic, legumes, asparagus, artichokes, and whole grains. And food sources that contain good bacteria, what we call probiotics, include naturally fermented foods like kimchi, sauerkraut, kombucha, kefir, and yogurt. And that leads me to my next tip for you, which is to add some raw apple cider vinegar to your meals. So raw apple cider vinegar contains some good bacteria, probiotics, due to its fermentation process, which is a good thing for our digestion. It's also an acid which can help improve our digestion for those who tend to have lower stomach acid. Again, which remember, this isn't a good thing to have low stomach acid. We need acid to break down our food. So you can try by adding a small splash, like a teaspoon, to any of your salad dressing, to your grains, or any of your salad bowls. It tastes delicious, it gives it a nice zingy flavor. 
And a rule of thumb to follow is to not eat until you're 100% full. You want to leave a little room in your stomach so it has the space to do what it needs to do to break down mechanically and enzymatically all of those foods without you also feeling stuffed. So oftentimes I find that people are so hungry and they're eating too fast, which not only means that they're not chewing well, but they could be overeating, which then causes them to feel like they have a lot of bloating or digestive issues after a meal. Being mindful while eating, taking pauses, and making sure your food is chewed well can help tremendously with preventing you from eating to 100% of a fullness factor. And throughout your meal, just check in with yourself. Check in with your hunger levels and eat until you feel like you're at a comfortable three to four. And finally, digestive enzymes in the form of a supplement can be quite helpful for those who need a little digestive boost. So, for example, many people cannot digest beans and legumes very well, and they, they're left feeling really bloated, and there are so many supplements on the market that can actually help break down the polysaccharides and legumes that can make it a little bit difficult for us to digest, even after we've soaked them. So there are also some foods that contain natural digestive enzymes that are more powerful than most than other foods. So for example, pineapple and papaya both have some really great digestive enzymes. Now you don't need to take a digestive enzyme supplement to optimize your digestion, but in some cases it can help alleviate gas and bloating. So you always just want to check with your doctor, consult your registered dietitians like me and someone on my team before taking any new supplement because it might interact with some other medications or other supplements, or it just might not be right for you right now. Now that you have some digestion tips to use to support your body, which do you think you could try this week? Just one. Let me know below. You can also take it a step further by downloading my free guide that will help you create healthy eating habits with ease. From what to eat, a few tips to help you maintain healthy eating on a daily basis. I'll also be sharing the link for that around this video, so just look around that. Now stay tuned because I'm also going to share with you a few videos that I think you'll really, really like in just a minute. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this each week and watch all of my other videos linked here that can help you create healthy eating habits that work for you 365 days a year. I hope that you have a beautiful day and remember health is a daily practice.